Hello friends, we we'll discuss the block diagram of peak microcontroller. The blocks involved in any peak microcontroller oscillators, A to D converter, ports, power supply, reset, memory orientation, timer block, serial communication, interrupts watched of timer so we'll see one by one first we'll see the oscillators internal oscillators mostly microcontroller or any microprocessor operates on 4 to 40 megahertz this crystal used in microcontroller and microprocessor for providing the clock signals these clock signals are required for the synchronization of all internal operations like delay between two successive operations. The capacitors are interfaced or capacitors connected to the crystals connected in series and grounded over here. These capacitors are there to resonate with the crystal inductance and cause the crystal to oscillate on its fundamental parallel resonant mode. So we'll discuss this later on in our part. Then the ports are given. As I said earlier lecture that in microcontroller ports ports are inbuilt. Ports are used to interface any input devices or output devices. Some of the microcontrollers are having three ports. Some are having four ports. In peak 18F having five ports and peak 18 port pin has dual functionality that means it operate or uh, the operation of any pin is dual port a comes with seven bits that means seven pins are assigned for port a the function of port A is I.O. and analog inputs. What is mean by I.O.? I.O. is nothing but the input output. That means you can interface input as well as output devices. Analog inputs means what? It is nothing but we know any sensor as the output as the analog. Microcontroller knows only machine language. So we have to convert that analog value into digital value. So if you want to interface any analog inputs, you can interface on port A. Then port B. Port B is 8 bits. That means 8 pins are assigned to port B. It is also have a dual functionality, IO and interrupts. There are two types of interrupts, internal interrupts and external interrupts. Internal interrupt we generally generate through software, whereas external interrupts we can use external interrupt on these pins. Port C, it is 8 bits, it is also as 8 pins are assigned and as a dual functionality, IO and communication pins. Communication pins are assigned for serial communication, SPI protocol, I2 so I i2c protocol and can bus protocol port d is also as 8 bits 8 pins are assigned it is also as a dual functionality input output and ccp module ccp stands for capture compare pw then port e bits 3 bits port e also as a 3 pins are assigned it is also as a multi-functionality input output as well as analog pins and control pins controls are read write then timer the blocks are t0 t1 t2 in peak 18f we are having four timers timer 0 timer 1 timer 2 timer 3 Basically, the function of timer is to generate delay and we can use timer as a counter. It may be up counting or down counting. The timer 0 is comes with 8-bit or 16-bit timer. 
or counter with 8 bit programmable prescaler. What is mean by prescaler? We'll discuss in our next lecture. Timer 1 is 16 bit timer or counter. Timer 2 is 8 bit timer or counter with 8 bit period register time base for PW. Then timer 3 it is also used for 16 bit timer or counter. Then WT is watchdog timer. What is mean by watchdog timer? It is hardware timer that automatically generates a system reset. If it is often used to automatically reset an embedded device that hangs because of software or hardware fault. If manual access is not possible, then programmer will design the special function register for watchdog timer in their program. Then memory orientation. The separate memory slots are allocated in any microcontroller. In peak 18, we are given SFR. SFR stands for Special Function Registers. The special function registers are assigned to do some tasks like timer, serial communication, PWM, A to D converter. So for these operation, the manufacturer assign special function registers in this slot. For example, timer. If I am talking about the timer zero, the manufacturer assign special special function register for timer zero is control register and timer register. Then RAM, program memory and EEPROM. Program memory is also permanently designed by manufacturer. Our opcodes are stored in program memory. Then EEPROM. EEPROM stands for electrically erasable programmable ROM. It is flash memory. We can write program in flash memory. Then reset and power supply ROM. Mostly microcontroller operate with 3.3 volt to 5 volt. Not more than 5.5 volt. Then reset. If any fault occur during software or hardware, we can manually reset our microcontroller function. If you press the reset switch, the program or address will start from 00. zero. Then interrupts, I said earlier, interrupts are two types, external interrupts and internal interrupts. Internal interrupts we can generate through timer. Whereas external interrupts, it may be hardware interrupt. In hardware interrupt, it is LCD interrupt, ADC interrupt, serial communication interrupt. There are lots of interrupts are there, external interrupts are there. The next block is A to D converter. We know the sensor outputs are analog. Microcontroller knows only digital values. So that for the process, we have to convert that analog value into digital value. So we require ADC. So ADC also comes inbuilt in microcontroller. For conversion, we require V reference, reference voltage. It is not similar like VCC. Then serial communication block. In serial communication blocks, SPI I2C USRT comes. The SPI stands for serial peripheral interface. Or we can say is a four wire communication. I2C stands for inter integrated circuits. It is also called as a two wire communication. USART is mostly used for serial communication. 
USRD stands for Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. If you want to interface any serial communi uh, communication device like a printer, desktop, LCD, we can use USRT. The two pins are assigned for USRT that is transmitter TX and RX. SPI and I2C, some sensors are comes with this protocol or if you want master slave combination in that case you can use SPI protocol that one one microcontroller will be master and other will be the slave I2C protocol use with two wire if you want to interface any memory externally we can use these protocols